Hello viewers and welcome to a brand new episode of Trash Talk on Lancer, Dust Grave Edition, where I talk stuff about mech. In this episode, let's introduce two of the alt frames at once, Stortebiker, and Viceroy. Klaus Stortebiker or Nikolaus Sturzonbecher was supposedly the leader of a privateer and pirate group depending on the time period that operated around the 14th centuries, the man existed, historians know that for sure, but almost entirety of his background and history is shrouded in myths and legends. Supposedly, his name is both a nickname and a surname, meaning empty the mug in one go in low German, which back then was way more impressive as these mugs can carry 4 liters of beer, which was also what he did to join a pirate crew led by Godek Michaels or Gottfried Michelson. But the rise of his fame truly came when Denmark began besieging Stockholm, and Sweden instead waged a Kaperkrieg or privateer war against Denmark to relieve Stockholm, hiring a lot of pirates to do so. These privateers and pirates became known as the Vitalian Bruder or Vittel Brothers, and Stortebiker and Godek Michaels was a part of it, the Vittel Brothers basically brought food and other provisions through the Danish forces to keep the city supplied, until Denmark finally gave up on taking Stockholm, and then Sweden gave out official letter of piracy to pirates and told them to rob Denmark blind. However, with the peace treaty of 1395, the Vittel brothers lost their client, but Stortebiker and Godek Michaels didn't stop pirating, they instead renamed themselves as the like dealers, or equal sharers, as they shared their raiding loot among the crew equally, as well as sharing it with the poor of the coastal population, basically turning the pirate group into naval Robin Hood. Unfortunately, all good things had to come to an end when the like dealers got a traitor among the crew that poured molten lead onto the anchor chains, disabling the ship and getting Stortebiker captured with his crew, and they all got executed, buried in nameless graves. Yet, despite this gruesome ending, the tales and stories of this man and those followed him is well known throughout Germany, one story has him offering a gold chain long enough to wrap around Hamburg for his freedom, which probably doesn't exist because that chain would weigh enough to sink his ship, Another has him asking the mayor of Hamburg to free as many crew as his headless corpse can walk by, he walked 11 before being tipped over. There's even a TV show about him, but it seems to be only in German so that's gonna be hard to watch for non-German, he even has a beer named after him too, which just sounds peak Germany. Named after the person, the Stortebiker is a close quarter monster that's constantly on the attack, no matter what happens. Unless you know it gets destroyed as the Stortebiker is an alternative frame of the Raleigh, it shares the same license as Raleigh, whatever Raleigh got, it has it, also, let's compare both of their stats. Compared to Raleigh, Stortebiker has almost the same stat, except it's more fragile, more evasive, faster in speed, as well as being a little worse in sensor range. As for its trait, it has two of them, first, dynamic reload, when using any weapon that isn't of auxiliary size, Stortebiker can, upon critical hit, reload any weapon that isn't being used on this turn, depending on whether you used ranged or melee weapon, which mean getting that kinetic hammer is now suddenly a very good option. Second, true silver, for once per scene, Stortebiker can apply one of the following effect depending on the weapon type, for non-loading weapon, the hit is treated as a critical hit, the damage however is not rolled twice, the hit is simply a critical hit with all that implied, for loading weapon, the resulting damage cannot be reduced no matter what. What this means is that if you really need to reload your gun now or need a certain critical effect, you can just get a crit like right now for non-loading gun, for loading gun, if you want to kill a tough target with near 100% certainty, this is it. As for its weapon mounts, it has 3, 2 flex and 1 heavy, which is arguably even better than Raleigh's ones. As for its core passive, Stortebiker has Hopkins Doctrine, a quick action you can only use after using a skirmish, which lets you perform reprise, skirmishing with a weapon that you just dynamically reloaded this turn, and renewal, reloading all weapons that didn't get to use to attack this turn. What this means is that even if you fail dynamic reload, you can just do this to reload your weapons quickly, and if you do, you can quickly attack someone with it, this also means that Stortebiker is the only frame in Lancer that can perform skirmish twice in its own turn without overcharge, which can change things up by a lot. As for its core power, Stortebiker can activate True Silver Weaponry for True Silver Arsenal, which upon activation with the protocol, lets you use True Silver trait 3 more times. Basically, more True Silver bullshits for your enemies, 4 times the amount in fact. To sum it up, if you are lucky, the Stortebiker is a frame that can be constantly on the attack even with powerful loading weapons, if you are not, you can still reload your weapon quicker than most frame that isn't you or Raleigh, and with True Silver, you can strike true no matter what, however, with a focus on using melee weapon to reload, 
the Stortebeker might be less viable in building a pure artillery platform than Raleigh, just a bit less though. Next up, we have the Viceroy. The Viceroy butterfly is a North American butterfly that looks almost just like the monarch butterfly but smaller, this is called the Bartesian mimic, a form of mimicry where a harmless species evolved to imitate warning signal of a harmful and often poisonous species to deter predators, which the monarch butterfly is. However, it has also been found out that the Viceroy is also distasteful to predators, making it a malarian mimicry, in which two harmful species mimic each other's warning signals to ward off predators, as the predator only need to eat one of them once to know both are terrible meals. Named after the butterfly, the Viceroy is a scaled down monarch but only in size, as its lethality still remains extremely high. As Viceroy is an alternative frame of monarch, it too shares the same license as the monarch, let's compare the two. Compared to monarch, Viceroy is obviously smaller at size 1, and terrifyingly, it's just as tough as Monarch, but with even more repair cap, however, it's worse at tech stuff with shorter sensor range and lower tech attack. As for its trait, it has three of them, first, near threat targeting processor, Viceroy treats its launcher weapons as CQB weapons with threat 3, with all that implied, second, vigilante omnidirectional launchers, for once per round upon a critical hit, Viceroy may immediately shoot everything of its choice in range 3 and knock them back, and third, pressure plating, Viceroy doesn't give a shit about explosion. What all its traits and its stats implied is that Viceroy can be a missile heavy close quarter monster of a machine, so it's basically just a walking SRM carry. As for its weapon mount, it has three, one double auxiliary, one flex, and one heavy. As for its core power, Viceroy can activate SSC-41 Tengu assisted missile tubes for heaven's downpour, Basically, everything in verse 3 of you die, or if they are still alive, they get knocked prone, they could pass a hull save to take less damage, but you may also consume lock on to make them auto fail. Also, before or after taking this action, you can fly away up to your speed, ignoring engagement and reactions. And yes, this is totally different from a certain missile heavy special attack made by a missile heavy lady in a hero shooter game that desperately tries to be Team Fortress 2 but couldn't because it's just Overwatch 2. Don't be Overwatch 2. In short, Viceroy subverts everything about the Monarch, which avoids social interaction through the power of long-range missile attack, Viceroy instead just gets within your personal space and drop kicks a missile straight to your cockpit. Anyway, that's all on both of these amazing mechs, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.